<laughs> ah! I better step on the gas. All right. <laughs> Time for me to go. <laughs> Yo, y'all like anime? I love anime! Yeah. And manga! Superheroes? Go, Do you like wrestling? Hey, bro, watch your jet. Watch your jet, bro. Watch your jet! Well, if you said yes to any of these things, let me introduce to you one of the most famous old school shown animes that you probably never heard of. But that ends the day. Because right now I'm here to tell you about Kaneku Man. Time is great, but don't get too comfy. Toonami will be right back. To keep this intro short and sweet, Kanika Man is simply a gag combative sports shonen anime about superheroes, supervillains, kaiju, duking it out in wrestling rings, WWE style. This anime follows Kaneki Man, aka Sugoru. Sugoru is the prince of planet Kaneku, who got abandoned one day on vacation because he accidentally fell off a spaceship and literally got replaced with a pig, and his parents didn't know until they got back to the planet. Well geez, and I thought Yasop and Ging Freaks were the worst parents in anime history. So one day while partying with his friends at the Gyudon Appreciation Club, a random young boy saying meet tells him about his origin story, tells him how he is the prince of Planet Kaneku and must uphold the family name and traditions of Planet Kaneku by becoming a Chojin warrior, aka B tells him to stop being a piece of shit and become a true hero. And now with that quick synopsis all the way, I think it's time for a little history lesson. Kaneku Man got its start as a manga under the publication of Shonen Jump in 1979. It was actually written by two mangakas. Those two being Yoshinori Yukai and Takahashi Shida. These two guys actually met in the fourth grade and worked together to become professional mangakas. They even created a joint pen name, Yudete Mago. The initial popularity of the Kaneku Man manga would also initiate the anime adaptation in 1983. It had 137 episodes and lasted until about 1986. Thanks to the success of the manga and the anime, it was obvious the public wanted more. And that's what Yudemoto exactly gave him with the sequel. Kanikame Neisei, or better known in the US, Ultimate Muscle. <laughs> Ultimate Muscle has most of the same things most sequel animes and mangas have. Pretty much the same premise as the predecessor, but with just a new spin of it being a second generation. And there's lines of strength. Since it's so similar to Kanika Man, you know it will be at least good. But now they're pretty much using a nostalgia as a weapon to hook the older audience. And there also lies its weakness. Kanika Man and Ultimate Muscle are so similar that sometimes it could be quite boring to watch if you already have seen Kanika Man. Which thankfully didn't apply to me. Being the zoomer I am, I wasn't alive when Kanika Man originally aired, and I was watching Ultimate Muscle on the Fox Box when it premiered, which was in 2002, by the way. More specifically, September 14th, 2002. Ultimate Muscle will be back after these messages. Ultimate Muscle! Ultimate Wrestling! Ultimate Flair! Ultimate Muscle is everywhere! Ultimate Muscle! They slam in your locker, invade your space, fight in your food, and get in your face! Over 100 to collect, including rare silvers! Ooh. They fight in all shapes, colors, and sizes, with ultimate tools that pull us surprises! Ooh. Bring it up! Ultimate Muscle! Ultimate Flair! Ultimate Muscle! You can collect them all if you dare! One and a half inch figures sold in packs of 15, six and a half inch figures in packs each sold separately from Bandai! Back to Ultimate Muscle! Ultimate Muscle follows the story of Kaneku Man's son, Kaneku Man Mentaro, or as he's known in the States, Kid Muscle. Kid Muscle actually carries the same faults as his father, Kaneku Man. They're both equally cowardly, lazy, obnoxious, and even selfish at some times. But just like his father, Kid Muscle knows when it's time to put on the big boy protagonist pants and actually wreck some shit. And that's where the strength of both of their characters lie. Both are lovable oafs, but also know when it's time to get serious and get the job done. My favorite example of this in Kanika Man lies in the first Chojin Championship, 
After Roman Man beats Terry Man, Roman Man gives his heartwarming speech about how he's disappointed in Kaneku Man, pointing in the fact that he's not even training for his final fight against Roman Mask in the finals. How he's probably celebrating with his friends because he thinks he'll get an easy win, or because he's just lucky that he made it this far. Not even really trying to be the champion in the first place. It's only then at that very moment, Kaneku Man notices how disrespectful he's being, how this sport and this way of life is truly all there is for these types of people, how this is what they work for, what they strive for, and his inability to take just one moment of it seriously, it's just a spit in the face for all that they believe in. A similar moment in character growth happens to Kid Bustle when he thinks about quitting mid-match, but then after realizing everything that his friends have sacrificed and how much they believe in him and how much is actually riding on him, he then realizes that that's not an option. He's got to give his opponent everything he's got, not just for him. Kid, you're inside Hydrozoa. Get out of there, pronto! Oh. Are you nuts? You're supposed to be getting R&R in &R the ICU! I can't be cooped up when the kid needs my support! Kid Muscle! Kid Muscle! Uh, Harry Kenyon, come on! You gotta bust out of there like a pig in a china shop! Kid, you're gonna win or my name's not Dick Dick! Trust yourself, you can do it! You guys are all hot! Did you hear that, kiddo? It's the power of friendship! I know it doesn't sound like much, but it'll get you out of some pretty tight jams! We're with you inside there! Our strength is with you! <laughs> Moments like these are why I really think Kaneku Man deserves to be rebooted. Not only that, but this specific series has such a long history with Shonen Jump. The popularity of this series was so high that the manga even got a spin-off that's just the same thing as the original series, but every character is gender-bent. I'm not even lying, there's an actual manga called Kaneku Man Lady or Kaneku Man Girl. I don't really know which one it is, but then again, I don't really fucking care. This series made such waves in Japan that it even has its own national holiday. Or should I say holidays? Kaneku Man Day is a holiday that could happen multiple times in the Japanese calendar. This series has inspired so many manga creators that even the creator of One Piece, Oda, even used to draw his own Kaneku Man OC when he was a child. Panda Man, he's in the background of almost every One Piece episode and manga chapter. Can't really beat clout like that. Another thing that really puts faith in me that a reboot of Kanika Man would work are the cutscenes in the Kanika Man Pachinko game. If those gorgeous pieces of animation are at all foreshadowing of what a Kanika Man reboot could possibly be, I'd say it's totally worth it. It doesn't matter if there's an inherent risk that this will be the next dumpster fire of a reboot like Sailor Moon Crystal. If there's at all a chance it could be the next godsend of a reboot like Netflix's Devil Man Crybaby, like I said, totally worth it. And honestly, a Kanika Man reboot, I don't see it to be out of the realm of possibility. After all, if Shaman King can come back, anything can happen. I guess in short, what I'm really just trying to say is that the Kanika Man series is great. I've enjoyed everything about it so far. The entirety of Ultimate Muscle that I rewatched for this, and the little bit of Kaneku Man that I've saw. I even went so far as to replay the Ultimate Muscle tie-in game, and I even enjoyed that. Let's go! This series needs, no, deserves a reboot. It's too great not to share with a new audience. I love Kaneki Man so much that I'm actually going to list some of my favorite main characters and side characters from the story. But in song.
Get Nick and Mac and Muscle, Robin Mass and Kevin Mass, Terry Man, Terry Kid, Wars, Manny Honda, Scarface, The Gator, Special Man and Van Oz, Naruto, Neptune Man, Geronimo, Totally Not Racist, Buffalo Man, Dick Van Dick, Ashura's Raph, Black Hole, and Jaw, Definitely Not a Nazi, Earth Chen's Dead, Captain Jack Sparrow, Alpha Male and Beta Male, Akuma Shogun, Me Love You, You Tom, Monster Cheeks, and Wash Ass. Now that that embarrassing experiment's over, I'd like to close this video by saying thank you all for your time, and make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.